Hello, today we will talk about the origin of wind. In the last video we derived Navier-Stokes equations and we said they explain motion of all fluids on this planet and beyond. When you say something like that you better be able to explain the origin of wind. Because wind is one of the most fundamental fluid motions that you can think of. So in today's video we will go back to basics. When I say that I mean we will consider that the wind is uh, triggered only by the pressure gradient force. So all other forces will be neglected. This is usually something that is not done in a classical fluid dynamics or atmospheric science courses because whenever people say there is pressure gradient force acting on a parcel of air, they usually continue in that sentence saying and then there is Coriolis force, viscous forces, turbulence and so on. Today we neglect all these. There is only parcel of air and there is pressure difference. What will happen? Let's go and check it out. We start with the vector form of Navier-Stokes equations that we derived in the last video. Acceleration or material derivative on the left side is the pressure gradient force, gravity, viscous forces, centrifugal force and the Coriolis force. I will consider two points let's say point 0 and point 1 above Earth's surface. They are at the same height above the surface, so the same gravity is acting on both points. I don't need to consider it. There is no viscosity, no centrifugal force, and no Coriolis force. The only force that survives is the pressure gradient force. There, are, there is a pressure difference, let's say here pressure is P0, here pressure is P1. So my, and uh, I will take this as the X coordinate. So my Navier-Stokes equation reduces to DU DT equals to minus 1 over rho delta p delta x. How do I solve this equation? Well, I can immediately multiply with dx and uh, get here u d u and here dp, but I will first write the left hand side as uh, the sum of the individual derivative delta u delta t plus advection u delta u delta x plus v delta u delta y plus w delta u delta z equals minus 1 over rho delta p delta x. This pressure difference is constant in time so this disappears. There is no advection in the x or y directions, so these terms disappear. The only one that survives is u delta u delta x. I multiply the whole equation with dx. I get here u du because delta u delta x times dx is total derivative of u equals minus dp over rho, right hand side. Now I need to integrate this between these two points. So I will write that, let's say here, u du integral is equal minus 1 over rho dp I integrate because I assume that density is constant. Here I integrate between P0 where velocity is some U0 to P1 where velocity is some U1 that I'm trying to find. I hope you know how to solve this integral. The solution is, of course, u1 squared minus u0 squared over 2 
So I immediately solved the integral and inserted limits is equal 1 over rho. I will remove this minus, but I will switch the order of uh, integral limits. So P0 minus P1. Let's say we are interested what is the velocity u1 if the original velocity and p at uh, the zero position is zero. So the air parcel that starts from here has no initial velocity. What will be velocity when it reaches this point where the pressure is p1? In that case, this equation becomes u1 is equal square root 2 p naught minus p1 divided by rho. Let's take some reasonable values for density and pressure. Let's say the density is some uh, normal value, 1.29 uh, kilogram per uh, cubic meter. p naught is equal to, let's say, 1,005 hectopascals, which is also 1,005 millibars, and P1 is 1,000 hectopascals, which is 1,000 millibars, which means pressure P0 is higher than pressure P1, which means the air parcel will move from uh, P0 to P1. Now I will plug in these numbers in this equation and I will obtain that the velocity is 28 meters per second. This is the velocity the parcel of air will uh, gain if it is immersed in the pressure field that has the differential pressure of 5 hectopascals. Now, if you know too much physics, you maybe already realized there is an easier way to do this calculation. If you are not sure what that way is, maybe pause the video and think about it for a few seconds. I'll give you a few seconds. As uh, Agad Mator would famously say, for those of you that found the solution, congratulations. And for those of you that just want to enjoy the show, it is the Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation is actually much easier way or path rather to take to get the same result. Let's look at it. Remember that the Bernoulli's equation was between these two points would be P naught plus one half rho u naught squared plus rho g, let's say z naught, equals to p1 plus 1 over 2 rho u1 squared plus rho g z1. We said that z1 and z naught are the same, so this disappears. Densities are the same everywhere. We said that initial velocity of the air parcel is zero. If it is not zero, then we have to account for this term, but we said it's zero. And look, the only that survives is this, and this, terms over, this term over here. And that's exactly the same as the equation that we derived here from the original set of Navier-Stokes equations. This is not surprising because Bernoulli's equation indeed can be derived from the Navier-Stokes equations. Navier-Stokes equations are a big daddy. And we will carry out this derivation in one of the future videos. Namely, we will derive Nav uh, Bernoulli's equation from Navier-Stokes equations. So this was the origin of wind, only thanks to the pressure gradient force and how we solve Navier-Stokes equations in the most simplistic way, namely all 
terms except for the pressure gradient force are neglected and how you carry out the integration. I would like to make one small remark at the end of this video. As you know, by now in the last video we derived Navier's Stokes equations and really now I could spend 37.9 years talking about different phenomena uh, related to Navier's Stokes equations and solving these equations for different uh, cases. And I will do that, but not in continuity. So now when we have these equations from time to time, I will come back and explain some of the phenomena, geostrophic wind, gradient wind, uh, flow between two parallel plates and so on. But at the same time, I don't want to uh, just talk about Navier-Stokes equations. So I will switch between wind energy, wind engineering. I will also start new playlists that are on measurements, radiation, chemist atmospheric chemistry, atmospheric thermodynamics, which will probably be one of the next playlists and, uh, you know, all other kinds of uh, physics related and atmospheric related uh, phenomena. Until next video, goodbye.